All right. Okay, Wonderful. I think we're making some headway. We're just yeah, thank trying you. to, for the radio audience, we're trying to make sure we uh, get on Facebook Live and and uh, our Zoom coverage. So, but uh, during the meantime, Colonel, if you want to do the disclaimer. Yeah. Uh, for those out there in the Facebook land, uh, the views stated on this program are the host and, and our guests, and uh, that is all. And we don't represent any other entities other than uh, ourselves. Thank you. And, uh, so, thank, I, thank you. Thank you, Colonel. Appreciate that. And we sure, surely want to uh, welcome everybody on Facebook uh, when you come. And we're here. We're going to end Black History Month, uh, which ends tomorrow, uh, just like we started with a conversation with the host. <laughs> and um, we appreciate you listening. And Colonel, you want to start us off there? Well, you know what? And, and since this is Black History Month, and we do this every year, and it should be, and even though uh, America ce celebrates uh, Black History Month for that one month of the year, and we celebrate it there, but I think that it, uh, Black History Month should be a Black History Year every year. And uh, just not to put our uh, accomplishments of the past uh, highlighted in this year. And it's more important now that we uh, we talk uh, how the other side, the Confederates, I'll call them the Confederates, want to whitewash history, to wipe out Black history. And you'll notice that since they've taken over the House of Representatives, there's no mention of Black History Month. So, and it tells you uh, historically that yes, uh, what they want to do with all blacks in this country is to whitewash us and to wipe us out. So what it is important is what are the policies that uh, they aspire to do? I saw a, uh, an article for those in, I'll say, I'll start from where it hits home for a lot of people. Uh, we noticed that uh, some of the pandemic programs that it helped people buy food. SNAP program is running out of money. It's going to be stopped as of Wednesday, the extra um, SNAP money. And people were, there are going to have people that, uh, or families, that are going to have reductions from either from $90 to $150 extra a month that they were receiving. When you get a short check, you call your representative and thank them, call the house and say, How, where is my money? Where <laughs> my and you think a Republican, think a Republican for your reduced benefits because that's where it's coming from. And they've also put out uh, a motion or a, uh, a bill to uh, cut housing assistance. So when you get less uh, money, for your housing assistance. And, and now that uh, we're getting ready to uh, transition into summertime and you get less money for your uh, air conditioning bill or help from the government, think a Republican. Think <laughs> a Republican. Or I say, think of uh, one of the Confederates out there because <laughs> that's where all the money comes from in uh, how, you know, in governments. And so, uh, I'll lead with that. So, what, what do you say there, Slim? That you're uh, smiling at that, 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 that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it reminds me. Uh, are we in in into a second reconstruction of America? You know, like the, the first yeah. reconstruction started like 1863, 1865, and it was for the Confederate states to to uh, conform to the end of slavery by being all inclusive and bringing us in for a while. We were being elected to the Senate and Congress and all that. And then, uh, then all of a sudden they said, hey, wait a mm -hmm. minute, we can't have this, you know. And then they just turned all that st stuff around with the mm -hmm. Jim Crow laws and everything. So are we in a second reconstruction period where everything was going well? We have people in Congress. We have now we're trying to re turn that all around. Is, th is this way history is uh, treating <laughs> us, you know, repeating itself? And you know, mm -hmm. the thing says, if we don't pay attention, if we don't educate ourselves, history tends to repeat itself. Is this what's happening now? Well, it's definitely, it's definitely repeating itself in as much mm -hmm. as I'm so thankful for those college students in Florida 
who will be walking out on February on March 8th. Uh, they're going to walk out in light of all the changes that DeSantos is trying to make to the educational agenda in the Florida arena. Uh, and if we remember probably, uh, if we remember most action, foot action began with youth mm -hmm. here in America. On as college well as you campuses. Go to, yeah. You go to Soweto in, in South Africa. It was the youth who started the movement. And it's the youth once again who's coming out and speaking up. Older people seem to be sitting back and being complacent about what's taking place as far as education is concerned. But the younger people are about to take action. They're about to take action. March mm -hmm. 8th, they're walking out of the on the college campuses and the action will begin once again. I think it's a little scary too for me um, to see this happening in Florida with a person who is a contender to run for president. Yes. That's the scary part, <laughs> because <laughs> now you're not going to just be trying to implement this at a state level. You're going to try to do it on a national level. Yes, yes. Well, and it, your, it, your governor is not far behind him. Really uh, he's he's truly uh, trying to make his mark for the presidential run. And uh, amazingly, uh, it seems as though all of those, as the colonel calls them, Confederates, who are trying to make that run for that presidential seat are all using black folks as a means, or people of color, mm -hmm. as a means of rallying up their base mm -hmm. so that um, it would generate that population that they need. But the, the good thing about it is, and I pray that it's so, is that the majority of the Americans are not buying into what they're selling. Mm -hmm. Well, you, here's another piece. As we start off, uh, they have slipped up. Margie, a representative from Georgia. Yes, yes. Lift up and says, we, in her words, a quote, uh, we need a national divorce. Yes. Meaning they want to split the union again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they want to go back to the Confederacy. <laughs> and we already know when you talk about that governor down there in Florida. Uh, DeSantos. What, DeSantos, what he wants to do. And mm -hmm. he is... Uh, worse than Trump because he knows the bureaucracy of the government. At least he's learned in that. And so, uh, but he is also, what, what I say as those students walk out, you can march across this country. Black Lives Matter did that marching and all that. But the more power you have, meaning if you want to march out, march down there and get your voter registration done and beat them at the ballot box. And mm -hmm. you beat them at the ballot box in mass. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you wouldn't have, say, the Confederate governor here in Virginia if we would have went to the polls then. Mm -hmm. uh, DeSantos won in a landslide by eight points down there in Florida. Majority, because one, he didn't get a... Uh, we ran a weak candidate in Charlie Chris, who is always... Uh, runs against, runs all the Democrats always put him up and we didn't go to the polls to support him. And so we let them get in, but we, we stay home all the time saying we'll cut, we'll, you know, it doesn't affect us in this and that. Yes. The policies that they do uh, affects us all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and I, I think we, you know, what, especially I can say, in my opinion, with the youth um, and the younger generation who comes out to vote, to be very quite honest, we haven't had a candidate that would rile that base up, um, you know, that has that's able to speak to them and have a, has a voice for younger generations. We haven't seen that since Obama. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no there's no person that the Democrats have put forward that really speaks to them and makes to make a change. And, you know, when we're sitting here running candidates that are in their 80s, w w there's no there's no connection. It's this he's so far removed from the generations, the younger generations that 
there's no representation. So when you don't see that representation, the younger groups are not, they're not engaged. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's all about messaging. And, and we don't have, if you're Democrats, we don't have anybody, our Democrat uh, people in a position to, to uh, seek higher office want to tiptoe around issues mm -hmm. as, as opposed to uh, the Republicans. They come straight at you where they're coming from. What's mm -hmm. wrong with uh, um, uh, one of our candidates talking about Black history and Black issues, you know, uh, and, and, you know, because it's a part of what, what we all encompass, I mean, or talk about Asian issues or whatever issue. Don't mm -hmm. tiptoe around stuff. Get the message out where you can affect people where they are you know we always talk about we have to go where the people are you know and you know i watched a um a, a reaction video of a young couple watching glory you know the movie glory mm -hmm. uh historical uh movie but some of the facts are historic and they got really emotional watching that and, and what that told me if our young people invest in learning the history mm. how how that Amen. can affect you you know, Amen. And I bet you those two people watching that glory and saw the, the beatings, they, they hadn't seen anything like that and how mm -hmm. emotional they got. I, I bet you they will be more involved uh, in their probably their communities mm -hmm. because the more that you know about the history and, and the more you know what your people came through or what they went through and how resilient we have been to bounce back from things that no other race probably could have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's James, all you, historic, you know, history. You hit, you, hit the nail, you, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, young people have to learn their history. Mm -hmm. And there's not a desire to learn their history. There's no reason why, I know, they don't give it to you in the schools, I know. Mm -hmm. But just as you get on air and you do TikTok and Facebook and all the other things, you can take a moment. The history is there. The history is is there on is is right there right in your hands. You should take a moment, although people are not offering it to you. You have to the kids have to take the initiative to go there to look to learn. Take a little less time with TikTok. Go in and look at some historical data. You know, um, I've often said we are the only people who wait for the school system to educate our kids on our history. Mm -hmm. No other group does mm -hmm. that. As I traveled across this country, you would see uh, the First Nations people having schools, teaching their kids their language, teaching their kids their history, teaching all the historical facts. You go to the, to the, uh, the Jewish community, they have schools. They don't wait for the educational system. When you go to any other group, they are teaching their children Mm -hmm. We are the only ones who want to wait for the school system to teach our children, and they're not going to be taught the truth. It's not like it was when, James, when we were in school, we may not have had all of the written materials that we needed, but we had teachers like Ora C. Churchill. She may not have had the, the, the history books, but she had the history facts that she shared with our kids. Now, I know that... Um, and, and like Les Young said, the issue is parenting. The issue always goes back to parenting, Les. You are so right. We have to teach our children. If it means just taking a moment every day to share with your child something about the price that has been paid for them to have the freedom that they have today. You need you know, to take that moment and share it with your children. And you know, I Lynn, think also too, because we have to really understand as well, one, how much times have changed. And there are so many more distractions for youth now than there have ever been. And when I looked at a study that they showed, I think it was on MSNBC or CSNBC, whatever it was, they were talking about how China, when it comes to TikTok, has limited the kids on what they can actually see on TikTok. If it's not talking about science, being an astronaut, educational, they it's not on TikTok. But the Western world is so 
distracted with everything else going on that he said, I asked the kids what they wanted to do with their lives in the Western world. And they all talked about being some type of influencer. But when he spoke to the children in Asia, all you heard was lawyers and uh, astronauts and scientists. And he said, so in 10 years, 10 to 15 years, look at where the gap is going to be at in education when it comes to how distracted children are in the Western world to the rest of the world. Mm hmm. And, and Roger, and what you speak is so true. Uh, I made numerous trips to Africa and it's amazing. These kids who don't, they, they don't have all of that, all that our kids have, okay? They may have one shoe on when they go to school. Mm-hmm. They may have no shoes on when they go to school, you know? But when you ask them, what do you want to do with your life? That I'm going to be a doctor because my country needs a doctor. I'm going to be a lawyer because my country needs, it's not what I need. Is what the country needs. Our kids don't care less what the country needs. Mm-hmm. Somehow or another, I don't know how we can do it to get them to, to realize how much they're missing out on, you know, mm-hmm. how, mu- how, much they, how much they're losing, how far behind they are in the gap. Mm-hmm. You, and, know, and, so, you know, sometimes, we sometimes we're, we're, we're trying to talk to the to the kids and we're we're talking past the parents and and, and I, I i talk about the responsibility of the parenting all the time and sometimes we let the parents get by you know because we do. We you do. know if you don't take control in your household or what you uh restrict just like a roger was saying restrictions that the government takes in china about how much tiktok you can't control how much tiktok or how much uh, content your child sees. I, mean, I know it's difficult because they they can outmaneuver you as far as the social media. But educate yourself about how to uh, control that. It has to start in the house somehow. Um, and and you know the parents have that responsibility there, and then responsibility is other places too. But if you, if your children are not walking out their front door with some uh, solid education that's inside that home you know that's where the, that's where the trouble lies i think yeah mm-hmm. and, and and michelle is saying maybe we should have educational sit-ins in the community <laughs> meeting groups downtown and other areas to discuss and share the history unfortunately michelle history during black history month was being shared by many individuals in the city of portsmouth however we weren't there i was amazed you know when 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 dr newby spoke about the Underground Railroad, spoke about Harriet Tubman, involvement in, in the local areas. You know, um, we just don't come out. We don't come out. And and you're talking about parents. Many of our parents are not much older than their children. Mm-hmm. They have not been parented. So we got, we got, we got children raising children mm-hmm. who don't understand, I mean, they don't look at MSNBC. They don't look at the news. They mm-hmm. don't want to hear about the news. They don't even know what's going on in the world. You know, so it's easy to slip stuff past them because they are involved in, as Roger says, all the other things that are out here that's distracting them. The parents are just as distracted as the kids are. Mm-hmm. And listen, Les Young says, for those of us in education, we see it daily, the disconnect is parenting. Parents, parents today are caught up in being influencers themselves. You know, well, our kids are seeing their parents playing video games. Well, <laughs> as let me say this: as far as being influencers, if parents are being influencers, in why can't way. why mm-hmm. can't they they put something together? You remember back in the day, Confunction Junction, yes. where, where they had this uh, yes this tune, and, and it was a, a catchy tune, but it was teaching you how how build how build became about. a law. It became mm-hmm. a law mm-hmm. and they had other things that and that kind of stuff catches a, a young child child's attention so if you're going to get up there and do do all the things and and monetize your your uh 
platform or whatever you're doing, be creative and throw some things in there. Like if it's a rap, whatever the uh, kids like to catch their attention first and mm-hmm. while, while you have their attention, throw some of that history in there. You know, there's a teacher and I need to look it up. I, I don't think know some people Chicago do. or where it was, but this man has made these TikTok videos and it's all about history. Mm-hmm. It's all about history. Why can't we have somebody in this area who's who's creative enough to come up with some type of TikTok or since this is what has our kids' attention, you know, something that would generate the the, the thought that maybe I want to listen to this, you know. I mean, we got creative folks here. Come up with something. Come up with somebody, something. Somebody has to do it, and then it catches on where yes, money yes. money can be made. Where money can be made. Then you'll see it. it all over the place. Exactly. But also, also too, my, my father was having a conversation with me the other day about this, and it was almost shocking to, to realize that he was really right about what he was saying was, we haven't had anyone in the black community to really push and advocate for us since Dr. King. Mm-hmm. That's really been on that scale to make a massive impact and massive move within the black community when it comes to education, when it comes to lack of funding, um, you know, when it comes to health disparities in um, you know, our neighborhoods. Who do we have that you can actually speak to right now that has that power and leverage to be able to speak to the black community but and create Rod- a movement like that? But Rod- it doesn't Rod- exist. Somebody but like once that again, but once again it's going to go back to the fact that you may have the individual, but are the people going to follow him or her? Are they going to follow the person? Mm-hmm. They're so distracted. I don't think you can you can galvanize people like they galvanized people uh, back in the day. You know, are, mm-hmm. are they even going to listen to the individual? They don't listen in school. They don't listen to their parents. They don't listen to the community. So what a person, if we have a leader, who, they're not, they, they probably won't follow them because they're not saying what they want them to say. Mm-hmm. They're not they're not doing the TikTok thing. They're not doing the, the, the social media thing. They're not being the influencer. Will they actually yes, I they mean actually you have vocal? to meet you have to meet you have to meet people where they are. And at this I agree, moment, I right, agree with that. At, at this at this moment right now, we have no one who uh can meet people where they are in those spaces um that is able to penetrate the home, you know, for a parent to make a change and how they educate their child. Um, it's 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 not it's just not there, and I don't know what that looks like moving forward um, without some type of movement in local and local communities to be able to really push, uh, you know, that education and thought process out through the community. It has to be someone who starts it on a local level as well. Um, that really pushes parents to be able to see because it, you, if you don't know, you're not going to do it. But Roger, you if there's nobody there to educate. You, you mentioned you mentioned uh, my, Dr. Martin Luther King, and and he wasn't self-serving. He he didn't get rich doing <laughs> on what he not was doing. All. Nowadays, <laughs> it's, it, it's a gender things are. Uh, and nothing wrong with having agendas, but some of the agendas are, are, are self-serving. Yeah. And it's hard now to, to pick out people. You don't know. They can get to people so easily through money. You don't know if these people are real or not. And that's why it's hard to get a following. Because you see, uh, and, and I'll just say, you see um, these Uncle Toms out there that will get out there and, and, and be up front and saying all these crazy things. And they're getting a following here, but then you look at them and then later on you see them being arrested or or, or being exposed. Mm-hmm. So it, it's hard to figure out now who do we follow? Because we were following this guy now. Now he's a fraud. He's a, mm-hmm. he's a, you know. And, and, and James, and historically, James, we also have a problem with when we have organizations trying to do things, moles are planted. You know, James, and before you can formalize your ideas, 
that mole who has been planted there has already given the ideas to the other side. So, I you mean. Know, that's where, always that's always been the case. You know, I, I saw something about the, the murder of, of Fred Hamilton. Yes. yes. And, and one of the, one of the uh, guys, and he ended up committing suicide behind it. One of the guys was was uh, was asked by the FBI because he he had a charge against him for stealing the car. So they, the FBI approached him and said, "Oh, you go and in, infiltrate the Black Panthers and bring us back the information." And he did it, and led to the murder of Fred Hamilton. Mm -hmm. You know, and it bothered him so much he committed suicide. But it's so easy to to get these people to do things like that. And so mm -hmm. it's been going on that kind of in in you know people coming in and and getting into groups and 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 selling us out that's been going on for years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know but it, it's interesting that you say that because one there's a connection with all that we go back to say martin luther king the church tied us all together exactly exactly and if you fast forward now and look at the church and the, the black churches i'll say black church <clears throat> uh yes you're the leader then you have these uh preachers and uh, that are leaders of their congregation and their and it looks like all the time that the, the the goal is not to unite everybody but it is to get a bigger church exactly <laughs> exactly church, we I talked know. about we talked about that uh yes yeah. <laughs> or to have or to have a church with three members you know everybody has to have a church yeah <laughs> instead yeah, of boils down to the money and and when i get all the big mega church and got ten thousand members or whatever uh now i got to have a plane so i can get to my other exactly church. exactly <laughs> and uh then you got the people in your church they got nowhere to live and nowhere all you want to do is increase the volume of money coming into your church and so <laughs> uh that there, there's there's that connection that is broken with the church and you also talk about i think roger you talked about uh uh inspirational leaders that we haven't had somebody that could talk to the youth since obama you know he was a once in a lifetime kind of guy <laughs> that, that the timing was right for him but he also opened the door for all the racists to pop up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Didn't like a black man sitting in that. Over exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That led to Trump being there because mm -hmm. it opened the door for all the uh, pent up racism that has been going on for 200 years, 250 years to come out and says, we got to put a hold on to, to champ, tamp down the rise of Brown and yellow and any people of color we've got to put them back in their places and now that's what we're seeing in our history now mm -hmm. and then so uh but the other piece i think roger says <clears throat> is that uh democrats don't they tiptoe around calling the other side out and we don't call out <clears throat> and you can't uh you know, I, I mentioned uh, 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 Green, Marjorie Taylor Green, who is a stone racist, and Speaker McCarthy, who espouses and is the, is in in the same cloth. You don't have to do it on the House floor, but when you go out and give your uh, your uh, speeches and in in in, in, in 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 out here in the public, call them out for what they are. If they if they espouse to talk about this CRT training and all this other stuff, say just call it. They are a racist. You have to call it out right where it is and put them back on their heels, and call out the policies. And and since I've gotten right here, uh, Slim, you want to might want to break in because we're getting ready to transition here. Okay, I'd like to thank all the listeners to WGPL thirteen fifty AM for listening today, and and uh, we appreciate you and. We're going to end at seven uh, on the radio, but we'll continue with Facebook Live. Yes. And so saying that, but we have to call them out. And I think, Roger, you talked about our leaders being uh, uh, 80 years old, and that's a reference to uh, uh, President Biden. 
But if you look at his policies, mm. okay, over two years, he has done more. And people and black folks will say, what has he done for black? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you, he has done more for black people than uh, I would say uh, Obama did in eight years. And He's that's because they didn't want to let Obama do nothing. Exactly. But there was a meeting that happened the day he got elected. Yes. Yeah. A secret meeting that happened. Yes. Uh yeah. to make sure that they were going to block everything that he tried to do. Yes. Um, you know, and you know, it, it, it's a catch 22 and Giffen the curse in that position because yes, he was uh the first black president, and a lot of people will argue that he really didn't do anything for black people. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you know, what could he do? Like, that's the that's the real uh question here you know what could he do they blocked everything that he tried to do you know thank god he tried to get universal health care to some degree um you know and he did implement a lot of great policies as well but you know when you have you have a, a country that is divided between red and blue and it's not really about the people right you know it, it, it it'll never be what it's supposed to be because it's always a back and forth of red and blue yes but i i go back to saying obama you got to see you got there he could have spoke out and and, and gone to the forefront and say and call it call some of them folks out from the white house and say this is they they are racist he could be doing that now he should be doing it now, yes. Because he has no yeah, office that he's he holding. <laughs> Wishy-washy to do anything like that. And you go back to uh, when, the, when the Russians uh, invaded uh, down in the, in the Crimea area. They just walked in and then, so uh, because of Ob uh, President Obama debated if we're going to send them blankets, that's all they wanted to do is send them blankets and uh, non-lethal stuff. Biden checked a Russian and sent him lethal stuff and got the coalition together. If uh, Biden was the president back then, uh, we wouldn't have these problems with the R today. So, but fast forward when I'm getting off topic here is that uh, Biden has done more for black folks. He's put more uh, black judges out there and has more his uh, cabinet and people in the cabinet than Obama had in in eight years. He's done it in two years. The policies he's done or or has aspired to has helped us more than uh, any other president ever. And Colonel, and considering the world situation, uh, he's the right person for the time. Yes, yes, he because is. with him having had the history behind him. Yes. and understanding the various other countries and how they operate mm -hmm. and and um to be able to negotiate with those individuals a younger person if you don't know the history once again if you don't know the history you cannot come in and assume to know how to negotiate with those who have been there as well as long as you have yes. so for such a time as these he is the right person for the job Yes. To be able to go in there to strengthen the NATO alliance, to be able to go in to uh, get people to begin to work together outside of the United States, of course. Mm -hmm. But but he's he's the exact person for the times in which we are in now. Mm -hmm. uh, because if, if a person who didn't know, uh, Ukraine would be have been taken over by Russia. You know, China may have been going into Taiwan. Mm -hmm. you, you have to, you got, you got to have, once again, we get back to the point, you got to have that history. If you don't have the history, you cannot come in and, and make, and you don't have the relationships. You can't come in and make things happen as quickly as he made them happen. Mm -hmm. Understand Colonel, such a time as this. Mm -hmm. Colonel, Colonel, you made a good point in talking about, you know, the things that uh, Biden has done, but how many people know that? You know, you know, who, you know who's getting the, the who's speaking the loudest nest, those uh, uh, Taylor Greens and Tucker Carlson. More people know who Tucker Carl Carlson is uh, than than they know who uh, the real politicians are. And, you know, you just have to get that message out. People don't people don't really realize how much Biden has been doing. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. They don't even took their own home. Yes. And, and you know what, James, when y'all mentioned Taylor Green, when y'all mentioned Taylor Green, um, just a minute, my daughter's trying to call me and I'm online. But anyway, <laughs> when you mentioned Taylor Green, uh, the poor baby, lack of knowledge, lack of history, lack of knowing. If, if the wagons red state, make the red, most noise. Red state, definitely empty market. Yeah, wagon. red state separating from the blue state. But the red state don't pay the taxes. The blue state is the one that keeps this country running. So you're yeah. gonna have your red state and you're not gonna have any, you're not gonna have any money. You're mm-hmm. not gonna have what you need in order to um you you're not gonna have the finances that you need to run your state because you don't have the money, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's it's amazing, you know. <laughs> Once again, not knowing history, not knowing history. Yeah, I, let me get back to uh, local because Roger said something about you know locally, and you, we all know that uh, all politics is local. It starts locally, you mm-hmm. know. And, and, and as you consider the city of Portsmouth, I want to ask Roger, you know, as he talks to uh, the younger your younger peers, you know, as as they look at how the city government now, we still, you know, we've had a change in our. our our government, our city council, and you know the jury is still out on, on how how things are going to go with that. But we look back on on the past council and, and what was going on. People have to go up and tell them how to act in public, you know. And as we uh, look for leadership here locally, you know, where do we go when we see that kind of action going on? So your peers, you know, in a younger generation uh, from ours. What kind of conversation do you all have about the local politics? And you mentioned about we don't have anybody that we really can follow. What about locally? You know, do, do you all see any people that we really can follow? Because some people have got into office and kind of tainted, mm-hmm. you know, uh, people's attitude towards people in, in politics, and, and which is unfortunate because there's a lot of people out there that's that's uh, really care about Portsmouth. Well, for me, I'll say this is probably why I never got into politics was because people don't like to hear the truth. And I've never been really a person to sugarcoat anything, um, you know, for people to be able to digest it. At some point, as a people, we are going to have to <clears throat> understand and just face the facts of our own realities. And a lot of people that I've seen come through uh, city council also, it can't be your own personal agenda. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it really has to be the agenda of the people. Mm-hmm. What are the people going through? What do the people need? And if we can't even get past that part, mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, we're really not, we really don't have much room to grow as a city. Because there's no one that has been put in place or elected into place that has a heart for the people. So when you start putting these people in these positions where it's just all about self, you you, you will see that reflection throughout the whole city. Because there's nothing being done for the people. And, you know, I wish that there are would be more, you know, younger people who come in to really understand what's happening and what can be done in the city. Because when you have people who are local, most people who have been here all their lives, they have not traveled outside of Portsmouth or the state or the country they have a very linear view of what life looks like. And you can't run 
sometimes local government with a local mindset. You really have to be forward thinking outside of your community to bring people back into the fold of your community to help your community grow. And I feel like that's been a very big disconnect and a lot of things locally here in Portsmouth because a lot of people don't have the global mindset to think outside of Portsmouth. And so many people are used to doing the same things over and over again, expecting a, a different result. And we've never approached the situation with a different mindset. Mm -hmm. And we just continue to keep doing the same thing, same thing, same thing. And wonder why Portsmouth also can't grow to where it's supposed to grow. I understand tax dollars have a very big impact on how things move. But have we reached outside of Portsmouth to bring other things into the city to be able to grow those tax dollars outside of the casino? You know, we've just got a big tax moneymaker in the city since Jesus wore sandals. So I, I, at this point, I don't know, you know, what it's really going to take to get us into a position of growth and understanding on how to push the city forward. And it has to come from younger people who have got outside of Portsmouth that can bring those things that they've learned back to the city to help it grow. And, and I must say this out of frustration because, you know, and, and I think I've said this before on the show, being involved like I was, uh, you know, uh, in the 90s and, and things like that. We, Portsmouth was on that train. You know, we were on that train mm -hmm. to prosperity. Mm -hmm. to, to, we had people uh, in office and, and like or, or dislike me or Holly that thought outside of exactly. the, 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 the uh, confines of Portsmouth. Mm -hmm. uh, he was nationally known and things like that. He knew that we had to go outside. We had somebody in economic development and not slighting them now because all that comes, to, it all comes down to, to leadership. And then I saw a, a, a change in the way we were, were electing people, mm -hmm. uh, not for you know what how they felt for Porson, but how popular they were. And then we start seeing uh, the, the ramifications of that. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we were electing people that were self-serving, uh, uh, didn't keep up with what was going on. Thank you. You know, didn't in the know city, you know, uh, were not prepared for meetings, you know, and things like that. So just because they wanted to hold office and be called council person or, or whatever. And, and until we get back to that, and, and mm -hmm. to what you said, you are discouraged about getting into politics and like a lot of young people, and that was people, my major. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I remember uh, the political science, and and a lot of people out there that that are probably be good for that. But they 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 look at what's going on there and say, I don't want to get involved with that. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can approach it from a different way. But we need people to to go into that leadership position. Those people that make policies, that mm -hmm. that that uh, give the citizens a comp, you know, a reason to believe in our leadership. Mm -hmm. And and we we've kind of gone away from that. I'm not going to say we all didn't always have people that were questionable that were in our leadership, but we had other people around them that had a vision for for Portsmouth, and and we just you know like I said about that train, that train has been I'm, derailed. I'm in my in my opinion. I agree. Step off for one minute, so um, you all keep on. I it must be an emergency. I right okay. Back. Yeah, so you talk about that 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 train and that vision. And so when if you're sitting on city council and then you're doing the approval process, somewhere in the uh in the approval process of bringing a, a, a another business here. Mm -hmm. If your only vision is to bring another car wash here. If I see another one, oh my gosh. Yes. And and that's the only thing to be or, or a storage facility. There's another one. Or <laughs> Oh, uh, we'll build another church. <laughs> None of those businesses, after the initial flux of money comes in, after we, uh, you know, have all the construction permits and and bringing in the stuff, is bringing out any real money to the city, or 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 is going to be an attraction for anybody coming from outside to bring any to say tourist dollars in. Mm -hmm. It does nothing for the city. 
Matter of fact, you've got more, uh, say, for the uh, car washes, after the first, uh, say, four months, after all the free stuff is, people try them out. They, see, they, they sit idle. You got them all sitting around, around the city. Car mm-hmm. wash here and there. You can always get your car wash. <laughs> and, uh, it, but they sit here not bring out any money and, and they sit there and rot. They're just eyesores. Oh. And so well, I will say for me, you know, <laughs> I always look at downtown Portsmouth and we have this beautiful waterfront that has never been developed mm-hmm. to bring and generate money for the city. It's it's not like we haven't had the opportunities. Yeah. And there have been proposals. Many been opportunities proposals but, that's been uh, presented. So but I'm uh, like, we're we're such a beautiful coastal city. And there's there's nothing there that attracts anyone to go down to the water. Mm-hmm. You know, you at least on Norfolk side, you have water side, you know, where people can go and there's restaurants or whatever. We don't really have any on the water restaurants. And I look at so many developed places like that, you know, when you go down to Florida or you go to California, they're all up and down the coast on yeah. the water. And it's places for people to go. There's attractions, there's stuff to do. We have to start thinking about how to really generate tax dollars in the city you know, and really bring those things to our area because the area is beautiful if it's developed the proper way. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, when the Renaissance came and those uh, condos that are right beside the Renaissance, that was supposed to be the beginning of the revitalization of that waterfront. Mm-hmm. And I'll go back to what I'm saying. When we uh, elect people that we don't serving that don't have a vision mm-hmm. that are self-serving and mm-hmm. and when we elect them without asking or finding out what vision they have you know mm-hmm. we elect them because we talk about how how they're going to treat uh ball fields and things like that mm-hmm. and not not talk about really talk about ask those can- candidates about economic development if they can't mm-hmm. uh, knowledgeably discuss economic development you don't need them in office mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but we we, we look over that. We don't even ask them the right questions. I think when we had the candidates on this show, we, we asked some of those questions about economic development. And, and I always said the people are either going to shine when they come on here or they're going to be exposed mm-hmm. for, for their lack of knowledge, for, for things that they really need to be up on. They don't have to be mm-hmm. experts. Mm-hmm. They have to have a vision about economic development and the waterfront and the jail. All these should be in the forefront. And all this stuff that 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 is being discussed and fussing at each other and things like that, mm-hmm. we just end up spinning our wheels. We should be way ahead of where we are today because yeah. of what we the visions we had back then. And and people like you, Roger, you you all don't know about those visions, but exactly. I can tell you I was there mm-hmm. and those mm-hmm. visions were there. And we were on a track mm-hmm. to be uh, the diamond in the rough, like they mm-hmm. used to call us mm-hmm. in Hampton mm-hmm. Roads. And now all we do is fuss and 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 you know re retract or talk about things that we we need to do paint the water tower which it is ugly but come on is that the main but topic? What I will I will say, you can always tell the wealth or non wealth of a city by looking at their water tower. That's true. That's very true. I can guarantee you, you can go priority. to every that's, that's other the first, city. First, first thing you see when you ride the into the thing, city. Exactly. The you, you see. You, you know, as soon as it's you the, go into that it's city, the, it's, the, it's like the big calling card. Yeah. It lets you know the wealth disparity in that city. But you know, but one thing. It's I not would, always the wealth disparity. It, it's, it's priorities and where you put yeah, priorities. There's yeah, no yeah. way. I don't care. You know, no way that water tower should have gotten to that point. Exactly. You know, exactly. You know, exactly. You know, and nothing can tell me we didn't have the money or, or mm-hmm. the resources to do something about that. It's yeah. all about not maintaining. And then when they we got to the point they wanted to paint it, then they found out there was some other issues with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because they, had, they have neglected the it for so long. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because they neglected it for so long. But you know what? I'm praying. I'm praying. Fingers crossed, toes crossed, and all those other things. <laughs> Eyes crossed. <laughs> Eyes crossed, the whole nine yards. That with the new council, prayerfully, 
we may see a change. Because yeah. there's one thing that I noticed it, is that they are abreast of what's going to take place in the meeting, which means that they've read the, 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 the proposals that are given to them prior to coming to the meeting. Oh, you, you can see and that difference, yeah. You, you see the difference there already. And prayerfully, um, they will have the vision. And, 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 and I'm thinking now with, with just with Mark Hugo, Mark has been all over the place. So he's, he's been around, he's seen things. He's, he's, he's been a leader over things. Uh, Vernon has the energy. He has the energy, the youthful energy that he brings to the, to the, to the group. And he's not self-serving, which is a good thing. You know, and he reads and he understands legislation because he's worked in the General Assembly. So yeah. prayerfully, with the combination of them with those who are on council, maybe now some things can begin to happen in Portsmouth, Virginia. It has to happen. They have to look at that waterfront. They're going to have to do something about that waterfront. And hopefully that is a, a priority. And you got to get the right people to develop the waterfront. You can't just mm -hmm. get somebody because it's a minority or because it's this or because it's that. You got to see what kind make of track sense. racket. What kind of mm -hmm. track racket are they bringing with developing that waterfront? You yeah. know, you have, you have to other have other things to complement that casino. That casino exactly. is going to exactly. be nice, but you want to people. Uh, at, you know, when they want to take a break from uh, either winning or losing their money. You want to keep them in Portsmouth. You want to keep them you in. You don't want them to ride over to Norfolk or Chesapeake mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. eat. Mm -hmm. or, or because, to, or and, you know, and I don't know if it's- For other entertainment. I don't mm -hmm. know if it's changed. It may have changed now. I remember originally on the on the, uh, on the the uh, casino site, when they ask for hotels, they talk about the Maine and Norfolk. So I'm thinking they may have corrected that now. <laughs> you got you to keep the stuff in Portsmouth. Well, we don't mm -hmm. have nothing but the Renaissance, but at least send folks to the Renaissance, you know, so. Well, the, um, the last time I was there and, and was doing a tour with somebody for the Civic League, the lady said, now they have some kind of, sort of relationship with the Renaissance. Good, that's so good. Maybe they that's have corrected good. that main thing. You know, let let and, the people find the main on their own. On their own, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't promote it in in Rivers <laughs> Casino. <laughs> but uh, but once again, you know, I, I I look at Young Frost, the young guy from uh, Florida. Is he twenty five years old? Who yeah. youngest congressman elected? You know, and uh, seems to be about the business of the people. And I hope that he doesn't lose his way. He mm -hmm. seems to be about the business of the people. And that's what you're supposed to do when you're in politics. It's supposed to be about the people. As you said, Roderick, what are the needs of the people? Let's address their needs. Let's make life better for the people in Portsmouth, you know? Mm -hmm. Because, it's it, you know, it's I, I, it goes back to, like, uh, when I used to work in luxury retail. When, when you are a person who works at a job, if you take care of your employees, they will take care of you. Amen. Amen. That's life. Yes. They will go the and extra mile. They will go the extra mile. Mm -hmm. And that is the same thing that rolls over to people in the city. When yeah. you take care of your people. That's right. The people will take care of you. You exactly. don't have to worry about high crime. You don't have to worry about, uh, you know, wealth disparities in the city. You don't have to worry about educational disparities in the city, because once you have taken care of them, they're going to make sure that the city is taken care of. Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly. They don't have nothing to fight for mm -hmm. outside of their lives. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, so, you know, it, 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 it it's going to have to, ha a, a change is going to have to, to happen. Mm -hmm. as soon as possible and and, yeah. and we're going to need and we're going to need people to young people older people seasoned people to come together mm -hmm. and stop the bickering too outside of the council chambers mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. come up with a plan come up with a solution come up in support of those who are trying to do the right thing you mm -hmm. know it's it's mm -hmm. incumbent upon us we we got to be a part either we say you're either a part of the solution or part of the problem so we need to be a part of the solution. I agree. Know, and, and, and so we can make some changes in the city. You know, it's human nature for us to be competitive, but we can take that energy Exit. and work together it's, because we need each right. other, the young, the old. That's the, right. You know, the, the old have been around. We have to experience the young. Some, some of the young have experience as well, but they have that energy and they have that, uh, those, those um, 
you know, thinking outside of the box. Exactly. Um, um, critical thinking is, you know, is important. And that something we need to put and back And they got that the technology schools. piece down, Pat. You know? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely need that. You know, yeah, definitely need the technology. Yeah. Uh -huh. But you know, there's a lot of people who are just, uh, when people become set in their ways, you know, it's very hard to change that mindset because they're so used to doing it a certain way. You're correct. But you really have to, and they have to understand that you have to be able to, to grow. And the only way that you grow is to change. Mm -hmm. Growth is not, you know, always going to be an easy thing. It's not going to always be rainbows and unicorns. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take some pain. Oh, it's going to take a lot of pain. <laughs> <laughs> just, just like giving birth. It takes a lot of pain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what you get from that birth is a beautiful child. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. That's for sure. And that is the thing that has to happen in our time now of the seeds that are needing to be planted mm -hmm. right now in order to birth a new time Amen. into the city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is our, our time for a rebirth. It is. It is. Yes. Hey, Leah, I know you have to do a hard uh, exit. So uh, at this time, you know, we always have fruitful conversations when we have the host up here. But uh, I know you said you had to leave. Right yeah, now, but meeting Because we could go over. We could go mm -hmm. over. But at this time, anybody, you know, any of the hosts want to make the uh, uh, last statements. And we will do this again because it's always uh, plenty to talk about from uh, our experiences, our own opinions and things like that. So we'll do this periodically. And uh, Roderick, uh, you you won't just be coming up here when we have the host talk. You know, we, we're gonna bring <laughs> you on. Hopefully, you know, if, if you agree, we'll, when we, we when we deal with other subjects as well. Absolutely. Absolutely, we still we need your perspective on that as well. I love being here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Colonel? So uh, I'll start off. For those out there in Electron Lands and Facebook and everything else, what you heard today is, uh, or this morning, is something, uh, is, a top, is a whole litany of topics from Black history, how it started, and then where we got, we circled back to uh, what's going on in the city of Portsmouth. So, but you're only going to hear it here. And so we also need your help. So if you would like to send a donation or honorarium or, or whatever, you can send it to Portsmouth Coffee Talk, uh, P.O. Box 7664, Portsmouth, Virginia, 23707. And uh, Slim will give you, uh, you know, our other ways to send, you know, send monies to help us. So, because 100% of whatever you donate to us, uh, to this program, to this institution, goes back into this program so that we can continue on to, to uh, enlighten the public. And so uh, we believe that uh, in what we've seen through the uh, ratings and everything that of the good that we do, because you're not going to hear it anywhere else. So <laughs> I'd like to thank you in advance for what you're going to do to help us uh, support you. And the cash app is uh, dollar sign P PCT1220. And, you know, uh, if you saw, we covered uh, the coldest night of the year. We, we were out there. So we want to do more things like that on locations and, and uh, not just here in, in, in the studio. And uh, we, we're going to want to upgrade some of our equipment when we're out there. You know, uh, we're using our personal stuff, the, the phones and things like that, which has been serving us well. But we want to be able to do that. And um if you, you want to contribute to Zelle, it's Portsmouth Coffee Talk at yahoo.com. Roderick? Um, I just want to say thank you guys for, for having me. Um, it's always great to come on um, and give my own perspective from a younger generation um, mm -hmm. on how things uh, are going and how I perceive them as you know, I walk through the city and I live in the city um, and be able to speak to those things uh, that are going on in the community. Um, and I look forward 
you know, to continue in these conversations as, as you said, Colonel, they are needed and you won't, you won't find them happening anywhere else. Um, and, you know, I think it's time for us to really take it to the next level. Mm-hmm. We, we, know- we got to take it to the next level. And, and my final words would be those of Tanja Williams, who says, and she put it succinctly, harnessing the energy, talent, and vision of the brightest in Portsmouth is how the future begins for our city. Tanja, we could not have said it any better. Mm-hmm. And Tanja want us to pin the cash app for Portsmouth City Coffee Talk. So Tanja, well, Tanja we- I, I will pinned it on my page, uh, James Overton's page, and also the Portsmouth Coffee Talk page. On, and also on, Leah Stiff's Facebook And page. also uh, Leah Stiff's Facebook page and uh, the Colonel's Facebook page and Roger's Facebook page. We're pinned <laughs> everywhere. We're pinned everywhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it'll be out there so you can, can contribute. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to say uh, in, in conclusion that make sure, and we talked about our, our local government, make sure we hold our, our city officials accountable. Sometimes we, we sit back and let them do things that that we disagree with mm-hmm. and we only talk about it amongst ourselves. Exactly. But we have to hold them accountable. We have to make sure we watch what they do and, and approach them and call them personally, uh-huh. email them personally. You know, once they mm-hmm. become public figures, th- that's what they are, public that's figures. That's right, public figures. And they, they open to us. Don't feel intimidated because they are a council person or something like that. You see them on the street. I always say this. Uh, talk to them. You know, mm-hmm. most of them want that interaction mm-hmm. because they sit up there. They want to do what's best for the, exactly. for the people. But if they don't know what the people want, they have to do what they think is best. And sometimes that might not always be the best. Okay, Portsmouth okay. Coffee Talk is here for our voice. Our community. In our future. Oh, Roger, we, have to get, we have to get your cup, Roderick, okay? Yes, and I have to, I have to figure out what my what my word is. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we still trying to get that other word in there. Yeah. Because I want to yeah. say really quickly before we leave, as it is Black History Month, uh, in the city of Portsmouth, for everyone to go and support I see Norcom High School. It is one of the last historically black high schools left in the country. And it is time that we start supporting our black institutions. Oh, right quick. Sh- shout out to the I see Norcom Lady Greyhounds Yay! for their playoff. They got to the second round and lost um, uh, the referees. But anyway, one and shout out to the Manor High School girls who also uh, got to the second round and uh, won successful. But <coughs> congratulations to them both on a successful year and the boys on both schools. Yes. yes. Okay, guys, I love all right. you all, but I do have to run. Okay. God Wait. bless. Have a great day. <laughs> yes. You as well. Take care, everybody. Okay. Bye bye.